Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this video, we are going to talk about the periodic table and how it is used to organize the elements into different groups and show that certain elements have actually common properties. So there are some similarities between the elements based on how they are grouped within the periodic table. So what we can see is that here's kind of a history uh, old periodic table uh, that we can look at and it has some elements that we may be familiar with things like helium and potassium and calcium but they're not quite ordered exactly the same as we look at now. In fact the noble gases right here which are the ones that don't interact very often are actually on the left hand side, whereas in a modern periodic table, they are over on the right. And there's also a grouping here that is to elements that are normally in the middle of the periodic table. So it's slightly different groups than what we used use currently that we'll take a look at shortly. But they found that they could be grouped by their chemical properties. So that all of those here in this group actually had very similar chemical properties. These are the ones that didn't like to react with anything. And the ones in each column here all had relatively similar chemical properties with each other. So the difference was you had lower masses up at the top and then the mass would increase as you worked your way down the table to heavier and heavier things as you got down towards things like uranium way down at the bottom here. So what it did predict was the existence of elements that had not yet been discovered because they had not uh, they were not had not yet been detected but there were elements that should fit in various places but had not yet been detected. So let's look at the modern periodic table here. And this is our more modern one. This shows elements up to element 118 here. So going from hydrogen element number one to element 118. And it lists all of the all of the elements in order by increasing atomic number. Remember that the atomic number tells us the number of protons in the nucleus and defines what type of atom is it is. So hydrogen is atomic number one and you can see the atomic number up in the upper left here all the way down to things like uranium at atomic number 92 the most massive naturally occurring element and then other elements going up to in this case element 118. And the way they are grouped is within vertical columns shows the properties. So each element in this first group in group one, these all have relatively similar properties and will interact similarly in chemical reactions, as will those in column 18, column uh, 14, etc. As you go through any of these individual columns, they will behave very similar. These are the groups. The rows are called the periods or the series that tell us the first series, the second, the third. And you'll notice that there's different numbers of elements within each one and that there are more elements in each series as you work your way down the periodic table. So the first series has only two elements. The next couple have eight and then they increase as you work your way down. And this has to do with how the electrons are filling up the shells around the atom. And it does again, it tells us something about the properties of the ad of the atoms. And we can take a closer look at the periodic table here, enlarging this a little bit. And again, it gives us a lot of information on it. So it's always a good idea to have a printed copy of the periodic table for the uh, remainder of this class so that you have something to be able to refer to as you're looking at various uh, various questions that we'll be working on. Now when we look at a periodic table it gives us some information and let's look at one of these in more detail. So here is an example of one. Each box tells us about what element it is. So in this case we are looking at hydrogen and it gives us a lot of information. It gives us the atomic number up here up to the upper left. Down below the element we have the atomic mass which tells us the average. Remember how we did the weighted atomic mass. The symbol is given here for hydrogen and then the name. 
And depending on the periodic table that you look at, there may be more or less information given here. This is the basic information, the atomic number, the atomic mass, and the name of name and symbol of the element. Now, we have different types. We can kind of subdivide the periodic table into different types. We have metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. So the uh, in this case we have the metals tend to be on the left hand side of the table and in fact are the ones in yellow. So this section here off to the left are all what we call metals and they have certain properties in that they are shiny, malleable, and good conductors of heat and electricity. So you may recognize some of these things as, for example, standard metals like copper and platinum and gold that are metallic elements. But really everything over here is a metal of one kind or another. So the vast majority of the periodic table is the metals here in the yellow. The one that isn't is hydrogen and hydrogen is kind of a unique in the way it works in that it actually has properties not only of group one but also of group 17 and it has different so it has a different set of properties. The nonmetals all the way over to the right hand side in the greenish color here are the nonmetals. So these are dull in appearance and are not good good conductors of heat or electricity. So some of these are gas we usually see as gases like nitrogen oxygen here the furthest ones but some of them are actually solids as well things like carbon and phosphorus and sulfur that are actually uh, uh, that can actually be solids but they're not things that conduct electricity very well. And then in between in the pink here are the metalloids. And these kind of have a cross in properties between the metals and the nonmetals. And you can see they're kind of sandwiched in between these two, in between the metals, which are on the left hand side, the nonmetals are on the right. And then going diagonally down are the metalloids. Now we can look at the groupings and how everything is put together here. We have in a periodic table, we have the main group elements, which are the first two columns, and then the last six columns. So columns one to two and columns 13 through 18. And those are the alkali metals and the alkaline earth metals on the left hand side. And some others such as the noble gases and the halogens on the right hand side. The transition metals are columns 3 through 12 in the middle here. So that's this section in between. Now note for the first couple of series, we do not have any transition metals. They don't actually occur until you start filling up higher level electron shells. And then we start to get, the, get those appearing as they do here, but not until you get through the first through series. And then when we get to an even higher electron levels being filled, we have the lanthanides and the actinides. These are generally moved to the bottom of the table uh, to save room. Otherwise, you would have to stretch this out drastically to kind of squeeze them in the way the transition metals are done. But you'd have to squeeze all of these in for the couple two series down here. Now hydrogen, which would be up here, is unique. It actually has properties of group one and some properties of group 17. So it can behave like an alkali metal. It can also behave like a halogen. And it is very unique in that it has only one electron and is filling only the very lowest shell of that. So it actually has some properties of both of both of these two, uh, both of these two groups. Now we can look at a couple examples of how to identify some of these. And I'll just give you a few here that we can look at. So if you want to identify chlorine, calcium, sodium, and sulfur. Well, with chlorine, you then have to look and go back to your periodic table. So we're going to jump back to the periodic table here. So where is chlorine? Well, I already tell you it's a halogen group 17. But let's take a look. And there is chlorine right here in group 17. So you can look for the symbol if you can recognize it. You can also look for the names underneath here. 
So we know that chlorine is group 17. The next one we want to look for is calcium. So calcium, let's again jump back to our periodic table and look for calcium here. Well, calcium is the symbol is CA for calcium. And we find that over here on the left hand side. So calcium is in group two, which if you recall would be one of the alkali earth metals in group two. Now sodium, where is sodium on that table? Well, sodium is identified by the symbol Na. So if we go back to our periodic table and look for sodium. So you'll have to look through until you learn these a little bit better. But sodium is indeed over here on the far left hand side. Element number 11 is sodium. And if you recall what those are, we can go back to look up here and we find that sodiums are in group one. We saw that and those are the alkali metals. And finally, one more we want to look at is sulfur. So where is sulfur? Well, the symbol for sulfur is S. And if we go back to our periodic table, S is in group 16. And we know that those do have a specific name as well. And those are called the calc calcogens. So that is in group 16. So we can look those up. You just have to get used to looking for where they are and remembering their symbols. Chlorine is Cl, calcium Ca, sodium is Na, and sulfur is S. And again, it may take some looking around the table to be able to identify these over time. Now, a few more properties we can look at is, or one of the things is like, why do these properties exist? And we're going to look at this a little bit more. I've mentioned about the electrons. I've talked about that. But when we see how electrons are grouped into the atoms, we will see why these properties occur. So there are reasons that when we look at our periodic table, they tell us something about the number of electrons in the outer portion of each shell. And if we look at our main group, the ones up here in period one, have one electron in their outer shell, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, with the exception of helium, which has only two. So hydrogen and helium are a little bit different. But overall, we can tell how many electrons are in the outer shell. And that is going to tell us how they chemically react. So let's go ahead and finish up here with our summary. And what we find is that we looked that in early times, elements were found to have similar chemical properties. So not all, all chemical elements had different properties. There were some that were very similar. And we were able to group these using the periodic table to put these elements together so that the same ones with similar properties fall in the same columns. So each column tells us what kind of properties it's going to have. And we also talked about the metals, the nonmetals, and the metalloids. That also are more general descriptions beyond just the groups within the periodic table that kind of relate different properties overall. So that concludes this lecture on the periodic table. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day, everyone. And I will see you in class.